Hello, welcome to part three of uh, Northwich from the Skies. This is Fishter's Flights, and we're going to start off here at Owley Wood. Uh, flying out from under the trees here. We'll uh, just get across the River Weaver, and then we'll go up and we'll have a look what the area looks like. Now, Owley Wood is located in Weaverham in Cheshire. It's a lovely uh, area, not the best of days here, it's a little bit overcast. Uh, we should still get some good views. Uh, the River Weaver meanders there through the countryside of Cheshire. We'll, uh, let's have a little bit of a turn round in a second, have a look back at ourselves at the town of Weaverham and Owlingwood itself. Uh, so there's the river. Go to the left a little bit. And you should start to see the town of Weaverham come into view. Here we go. So obviously there's a path through the woods there. It's quite a popular area for dog walkers and such. And you can see me, where I've flown out from. And let's have a look up now. There is the main uh, good view over the top of Weaverham itself. Weaverham is a decent sized town, um, this area here is uh, where the bowling club there on the left and Owley Wood Club on the right, now in the centre of the screen, which is surrounded by fields and greenery, it's quite a nice area. Owley Wood itself is mainly situated on quite a steep slope. Um, the road there you can see now heading off into the uh, distance, heads towards uh, Barrington and uh, the Castle, uh, not the Castle Hill, uh, Winnington Hill area of Northwich. So we'll follow the river a little bit here, have a look. Uh, it's seen quite some heavy rainfall recently, so there's a lot of standing water about on the fields. So it's a nice little view. Uh, over there you can see uh, Tata, or um, ICI as it's uh, also known. Shame it's not a nicer day. Uh, it'd be a cracking view, I think, from here on a, on a gloriously sunny day. But still, you know, nice area. Alright, so uh, our second location today is uh, Pickmere Lake. Now, just outside Northwich are the towns of Wincham and, uh, sorry, villages even of Wincham and Pickmere. Um, the lake itself is uh, around about 800 metres across, I think. So uh, I'm going to try and fly that far. It might be a bit of an overestimate, actually, 800 metres. But again, in the Cheshire countryside, there, surrounded by greenery, all these green and brown patchwork fields here. actual uh, walk around the lake it's all, uh, all footpath all the way around it's uh, boots I think roughly all the way around now this day was a little bit windy um, not not a right lot but as we point back this way and head back towards the shore uh, in the village of, of Pitmere uh, you'll see the ripples on the water in the sun <laughs> there is actually a bit of sunlight today. Uh, it's, it's a really nice view, really nice. Um, it used to be famous for having a, a, one of those um, river boats that used to go out on the water. Uh, and I believe there actually used to be a fairground or something here as well in years past. 
uh, at the moment, just on that uh, sort of sloping green there just to the right, um, every year they have a party by the lake. And uh, they have a live band and dancing and people bring their own food and beer and drinks and stuff. Uh, really quite a, good, uh, quite a good evening to be had there. There you go, look at that. Oh, it's lovely. Just to, uh, towards the top of the screen, right dead centre there, you can see the, uh, the jetty from which I set out. Um, just sort of a, a wooden plank walkway. Flying against the wind a little bit here, so uh, it's a little bit slow coming back, but uh, should have plenty of battery. There's a little yellow house there at the top of that field, straight in front of us. Um, I don't know if anybody actually lives there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a really tiny little cottage. bit closer now let's uh, we'll come in now for a bit of a landing let's uh, let's get a closer look you know, like I say you can see the effect the wind is having on the water all those ripples and sunlight on it it's really quite nice hopefully by this stage now you can make me out I'm gonna come in uh, I'm gonna land on this jetty uh, let's go to our next location where should we go next Bit of a sunnier day uh, again we're still in Pickmere um, now I wanted to get this view a while back I've noticed this several times uh, driving past uh, down a public footpath you can walk past this big satellite dish uh, it's just off to the left here we'll uh, turn to it in a second I believe it's part of Jodrell Bank which is quite a big tourist attraction uh, not far from Macclesfield, I think. Um, there we go. There it is. That's, that's a big satellite dish. Now, I didn't know this, but in the background there, you can see another big dish way off in the distance there. Now, is that part of Jodrell Bank itself or not? I don't know, I'll be honest. I'm not entirely sure of the geography. Again, you can see all these pools of standing water from the heavy rain that we've experienced over the last few months. Um, days where it's been suitable for flying have been uh, relatively few and far between, unfortunately. But again, all these uh, brown and green fields, little patchwork uh, blanket layout fields across uh, the Cheshire countryside, again, really quite nice. Um, I think later on that day that sunshine did creep over our way and the clouds gave way. It was a really nice day after this. Uh, lots of farmland here. Pointing there in the general direction of uh, Junction 19 of the M6. Uh, you can see the, coming across the middle of the screen there, the main road that goes through uh, from Pick. Wincham and Pickmere all the way to that junction um, and just coming into view now is Pickmere Lake again where we've just been that's the main part of the village that's where most people in Pickmere live and over to the left a bit further is uh, the village of Wincham Go back to that satellite dish and we'll look at that. And then we'll see if it's uh, coming down for a landing here again. Some nice views there. Interesting to see that uh, satellite dish. Next location, um, not too far away from where we've just been. This is Budworth Mere, uh, also known as Budworth Bait, but baiting, Budworth Boating Lake. There is a boating club to the right where uh, boats and yachts uh, set out. The waters, I think, gets quite deep here. Um, now, I wanted to fly right to the other side of the lake, right across the lake, but unbelievably, that is about uh, 1.2 kilometers away. Now, the range on the controller is approximately a kilometer. So I lost my nerve a little bit. I didn't uh, didn't quite fly that far. 
Now I'm going to fly out here to about 800 metres away from my takeoff point. Um, I think that's far enough really. Uh, we should get some nice views. It's a much nicer day. Look at the sunshine, those uh, lush green fields there. Uh, I think that is uh, part of Marbury Park there to the left. Heading towards Combabatch on the right. Not, not so windy today, not so windy at all. Um, you can see quite a lot of uh, birds there on the water, just to the right. Cumberbatch is a nice little village. Oh, look at that view, that's stunning. That is stunning. Birds are having a good fly around there, and way above them. And uh, oh, there's a speedboat out on the water. Uh, speedboat, powerboat, uh, some sort of motorised boat. See the patterns it's leaving. You can see the uh, the ripples on the water again, so there is obviously some wind. Pitmere Lake there is in the background, and uh, that sort of village there to the right is Marston. Um, and in fact, actually, just over there, just in the left third of the screen, is uh, Great Budworth. Now, there's a big church there you can see. And the village of Great Budworth was used as a set for the BBC's uh, War of the Worlds that was recently uh, broadcast. I think it was broadcast around Christmas time, if I remember rightly. Uh, there's the boating uh, club, the bottom left there, just going out of view. Look at that there, lovely green fields. Lots of standing water still though. Let's have a look up. Oh, there's a great view of Marston there. That's the, uh, that road leads to, um, if you carry on going to the left there, that leads to the M56 eventually. Um, and further on to Warrington. Oh, look at the, look at the uh, ripples that that boat's leaving behind there. Gosh, how far do they spread out? How, how far do they run on that water? Hey. What a lovely day this was. All right, let's uh, let's head back towards where the, the takeoff point where I am. You know, I don't know if you can make me out there. I am stood on the uh, bank there. We know there's a big patch of green in the middle of all that uh, ploughed field there. It's a lovely lush field. I bet that's good for sledging in winter. <laughs> Cracking view of Marston. Well, let's uh, come back down now. Looking out over the lake. Beautiful view. So quick that yacht turn there. That's surprising, given it's wind powered. All right, we'll come down and land there. Um, next location. So I've took off from Fury Wood and flew out towards Curry Park. Now this is a Saturday morning and as you can see the park run is on. Um, great view of the course, you can see the front runners there, uh, way ahead of the, uh, the main pack. Oh, look at all the different colours people are wearing for park run. If you're familiar with the drone code, obviously um, gatherings of more than a thousand people you've got to keep 150 meters away and not fly directly over. The average turnout for Park Run is probably in the region of uh, 250 to 300 people. I think this day there was about 320 if I remember rightly. Um, look at them all. I was amongst this kind of, uh, <laughs> I was amongst this crowd on uh, Saturday just gone actually really nice to uh, to run it's a, it's a lovely route you can see they fly a lot, uh, fly run along this uh, stretch here uh, you turn right first and go along the uh, sort of meandering path there back round to the start and then you can see the path there just uh, turn, branching off to the left where they're all branching to the right um, when you come back round you branch off to the left go over the river and then along that line of trees there I think the uh, the people in view now were probably uh, 
the type that will run the five kilometres in probably about 23, 24 minutes kind of time. Um, so the further back you go, get into the half hour runners, that's about nice out of speed. So you know, that first bit there where you go uphill, up them, uh, them turns, it, it takes it out of you a little bit. So getting round to that point there where you branch off to the left, uh, once you get there uh, for the second time, that is about halfway round the course. You can see the full video of this if you like, I did upload a full unedited video of this. Um, as we go to the right here, what you'll see, you'll see one guy, there he is, uh, I think that's the front runner. So he's going faster than everybody else, weaving in and out, uh, getting around them. Pretty sure that is the guy who is uh, sort of leading the, uh, the part run. Um, there seems to be a massive gap between him and second place. I can't see anybody else approaching his kind of speed. And uh, I mean, the people at the very back here will be the, uh, the ones who walk the course. Of course, no, that is absolutely fine. Uh, you can just probably, uh, anyway, I'm going to end here. I think that's long enough for about 15 minutes of, uh, of, of footage. Uh, I'm hoping to get somewhere else next time, and hopefully, I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Hi, folks, thanks for watching my video. You made it to the end. Well done. If you like what you just saw, why don't you leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, share my video, do all the above. But whatever you do, I hope to see you in the next one. Hasta la fichta.